I'm going to tell a story, a uh, journey, if you will, through how to create some artwork, a mural, by the grid method. The grid method is an ancient form of drawing that is applicable today as it was centuries ago. It primarily addresses our attitude. A lot of my students, and many of you in here I've seen, uh, have said this, ah, oh, art teacher, I'm no artist. Uh, I can't even draw a straight line. If we dissect this and take this difficult subject and make it into small pieces, then it's easy to do. It's like, well, that little abstract, I can do that. No big deal. So you do the little piece, and then the next piece, and the next piece. And before long, you've created a new work of art that you didn't think you could do. So attitude made the difference. When you were negative, I guarantee you, you weren't going to draw. The older we get, the worse that becomes. So saying, yes, I can, you will. It's as simple as that. When I came to Austin High School, this was uh, Einstein. It's in the uh, um, atrium. It's an educational piece, too, that discipline-based educators love. It's disciplined, it's measurable, it's testable. It's 90% of the left brain that the education so likes. So the kid does the square, he turns it in, and I take a ruler. Incidentally, that's a great way to make a straight line. <laughs> the, so already we're an artist. He turns it in, and if the intersection is at mid, the middle of the square, and I take the ruler and I see six inches and they have made it nine inches, I can say, go back and redo it. It's not right. Uh, the grumble goes on. If you want the A, you're going to have to redo it. So they go back, redo it, and submit it again. And then it becomes like a team sport. First, about the same time we had an art show of the students. And to my surprise, they didn't want to accept their certificate or their award of achievement. They were embarrassed. I don't want anybody to know I'm an artist. So I met with the principal, Espy at the time, and we came up with the idea of having an all-school assembly where their artwork would be projected on a big screen in the Knowlton Auditorium and honor them publicly. We thought that all the kids should know something about what defines a good piece of artwork, as well as the instructors. So this was a backdrop that we did in a pencil drawing of Mrs. Espy. The assembly grew and grew and gained popularity that we got the music department involved to do this Oscar Awards celebration and come up with, and then the seniors came up with a theme. Sometimes it didn't make sense. <laughs> this is Casino Ostino. The music was Latin, <clears throat> excuse me, and the six senior artists of the year wanted to be 007, the spy masters of perfection and class. This particular mural done in tempera paint hangs at Oak Park Mall today. So in 2010, I graduated and looked for something else to do. And fortunately, I got involved with Vision 2020 in the arts section, and we put on a great show in the Artworks Festival. This particular sample is Eric Onfenson's painting that was purchased as an award and donated to the I.J. Holton. Uh, after this show, I was approached to teach a drawing class in the county jail. And after I got over the anxiety of working with prisoners, I thought, you know, the most creative people break rules all the time. I probably would have a good size class. <laughs> I ended up with three, and this was our first mural. The, the objective, the lesson of the drawing became secondary as it became a team sport. Everybody could do this, there was something to do, and the principles of design or lessons that would be, I could do individually. It was a captive audience, they couldn't go anywhere for the hour, and best of all, they elected to do it. Now the right brain, the creative side, this is part of his chest, and it was identical colors. But when you look at these six different artists, no two are exactly alike. That's because we all see something differently, and we interpret it differently, and we craft it differently. So they're all right. They're all great. But we have standards. We have differences. And if you want to become a skilled craftsman or a scientist 
or something that's going to need more practice and more training. That's a lifelong. It took Da Vinci 40 years to do that painting. I don't expect any student to do that in a 50 minute period. So you can go on to do that. It hangs in Oak Park Mall for a season. They put it right under the skylights, the oil pastel, really pop that mural. Um, the amazing thing about this when it went up, the many calls I received from former inmates who took their families and friends to see it, uh, commented to me that they were so proud of having something in the community that they did well. A lot of people would say, well, it's not the perfect work of art, but that's opinion again. But they were proud of it, uh, and they appreciated that. So Mike Ofstedal was last year's Purchase Award, and it will be going up in the mall. It should have been up there by now, but I guess the snow has prohibited it. But his piece is Back to the Earth. And that was some great conversation about environment, religion, evolution, you know, who we are as a person, and is it uh, worthy. Uh, the thing that I want you to take away from this today is if you can do the grid, you're now an artist. Very simply, in five minutes. The other thing is that when you're looking at artwork, including graffiti, consider who is creating it. What is their soul? What is their spirit coming across? We're the only species that can do that. So if it's a negative approach, talk to the artist. Go and do something about it. If it's a positive piece and you love it, it speaks to you, you probably should buy it. <laughs> um, and go from there. Um, Picasso said he spent a lifetime trying to rediscover his three-year-old inside. Uh, thank you. <laughs>